Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube tutorial video. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different from looking at just a build order tutorial. And today we're gonna to be doing sort of a deep dive into TVT and specifically the mid to late game and what I would usually do to win or close out a game. And to do this, I've actually got some really awesome replays. Uh, we've got three replays today to look at from three games that I played against 4GG on stream. If you guys don't know 4GG, he is an excellent, very, very talented Terran streamer as well. Uh, so these games are mainly just going to be me going three Raven push over and over and over again. And I'm not going to really show you guys the beginning. If you guys want the full build order, definitely check out the tutorial on my channel. It's in the build orders playlist. But for now, um, I'll just give you guys the quick rundown of what happened. This game we went for, uh, I believe this is just three Reaper, two Hellion. And then we run into some Cyclones here, it looks like. And we actually get a pretty good trade. But uh, these are just trading early game units. And typically these units are only used for map control. And in the end, we're only left with two Hellions and a Reaper. Which actually do run into some Marines here. Um, but this is like a pretty telling thing as well. Because having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Marines at this point is actually quite a lot of Marines. And I actually should mention that the game before this game, uh, I did play 4GG again, and he also went for a two racks marine opening. So immediately I kind of recognized that this looks like the same opening. Like that's too many marines to be off of one barracks. Like if we look at my one barracks marine production, I've only got four marines right now. So I know that 4GG is going to go for like a 2-1-1, possibly a medevac drop. But I am going to set myself up for the typical defense that you would uh, in this situation. And the way you would do this is you would put a tank in the main base, tank in the natural, uh, and then you put your ravens, one in the main, one in the natural, and you kind of just prepare yourself for anything. Like, if there's a banshee that shows up, you want to have your marines in both bases as well. Like, I don't exactly know what he's doing yet. Um, so we are just going to be waiting here, uh, building the tank. For the natural at the moment um i guess we can fast forward a little bit there i do build my command center and that's the normal time command center like you want to build your third cc at around the five minute mark um i think i missed a reaper jump in here did i what was that oh it was the two medevacs so yeah this is why we set up with one tank in each base like that's literally all you can do and i position this tank so that it protects the supply depot at the edge of the base like, if I were to put the tank over here, like, that supply depot would just die for free. So, this is the optimal positioning for this setup. And then, yeah, I even have a third tank at this point, so I can put that in between the two tanks if I wanted to. Looks like I'm doing that, which is excellent. So, yeah, I think we're just going to get our setup built here. We're getting our two extra racks. We're building our Vikings. And now that we have three Ravens and we got our tanks, we're going to do our push here, so... Something that I didn't do this game, and I think you guys should always do, and, I, and, the re and I'll explain why I don't think I did it this game, but when you're moving out, I think it's always worth it to scan, like, right around here, just so you can see exactly where, like, what you're about to run into. Because sometimes you scan, and you'll see that he's missing a lot of units, and that kind of tells you that there's a potential for, like, a drop to hit your main base. Um, it just it gives you a lot of information to know where your opponent's army is. So I would recommend like I had the I had the energy to scan before I lifted this command center. I, I should have just scanned here. Maybe I will in a second. But uh, I'm just walking across the map at this point, which is what you would do anyways. Um, and I am going to rally. I guess we are rallying units to our depot. So if I do get dropped, which looks like he is uh, still poking me with two medevacs over here. Um, I will have the reinforcements to just siege up and push that away. But that does leave us with an opening. Like, if there are two medevacs here, like, that means there's going to be less units over here, right? So, we go in here. Um, immediately, I get the third positioning. And I scan to the right. So, I do see that we have, what do we have? We have three tanks here. And we have no ravens or no vikings or anything. So, ideally, in a situation like this, really, I just need to take my time. And I think that's what we're going to do here. Like, I remember back at home, we're safe. Like, I did lose my third command center. But now I'm in a position where I can close out this game because, yeah, these units are over here and we're just defended over here. We have a tank. We have two Vikings. 
and we're going to be producing marines tanks and more vikings so now my main focus is just push and win the game um, and to do so we need to siege down our opponent's tanks and how do we do that um, this is essentially the trick to do it if you actually click on a siege tank i don't know if you guys can see this i'll zoom in a little bit but there are little markers on the ground right here you can see them and these are the range indicators and I'll, cl I'll click on different tanks so you can see the different range indicators and these tell you how far the tanks can shoot so when you're trying to siege a tank you want to go as close to the edge of that indicator as possible and the reason for that is you don't want to get hit by any other tanks except for the one tank that you're trying to siege down so essentially what you do is you unseed your tank like i do here and then you click on the tank that you want to kill and then you can see the range indicator is right about here and then what you do is you move the tank right to the edge of that indicator so you would right click right here and then you would siege up and that's what we do and then to follow up we take one of our ravens which we have three of and we're going to disable the tank that we're shooting at that way uh we just don't lose our tank because whoever shoots first is the one who wins like that's how tank wars work um, looking back here like he's going to try to drop these units it's going to do nothing doesn't even matter where he tries to drop those either i could just unseize the tank and follow um, it's a little annoying in the end like they survive and do a little bit of poking uh, let me rewind here hold up missing a little bit of stuff so we do go for the disable here like i mentioned i siege up in range I'm actually doing it a little faster than normal, like I'm trying to push really fast, so I'm going for two disables at once. And this tank is going to go after the tank from on the right there. And actually, 4GG does what you're supposed to do in this situation, and he realizes that if he doesn't take me out right now, he's going to lose everything here. So he actually pulls the mineral line. But because we're in such a good position, like we've already in a way checkmated him just by getting our tanks here without him like being in position to stop it from happening and i mean the reason that happened is because he went for the drop here right but yeah so we're gonna get a super awesome like scv trade here that brings him down to 30 scvs to 50. um lucky for him he did kill my third and he has another third building right now uh, i think i did not kill his either which is great for him um so now this is kind of a situation where we're even in army supply and now I need to figure out a way to close out the game, right? So for starters, I'm just going to produce some medevacs and just continue to produce units on every structure. I have one one on the way. I even built my extra racks, so I have all five barracks ready. Um, in this situation, I'm actually just not taking a third because my plan here is to just kind of go for the kill again. Because I know that I should be slightly ahead in army supply and I kind of am. Like you can see that we're 20 supply up overall. I don't actually know the army supply um yeah i mean slightly slightly ahead too it looks like so how do we end it and it, it's pretty easy when you're slightly ahead you just go for the doom drop um the main thing that stops a doom drop is ravens and we've already recognized that 4gg didn't have any ravens in this game yet so doom drop is kind of the easy play um before i go for any doom drop i actually always move out with like a small group of marines like this and I kind of A move them through the path that the medevacs would take. So I cleared the way for the medevacs first. I think that's like very important. Uh, and, and, that, and that's going to like make sure that you never get spotted. Because if I get this drop in the in the base here, like there's not much forging you can do. Um, yeah, we boost in here. There's no tank sieged up. He even tries to load up his medevacs at the same moment. And that's just never going to work. So this game gets closed out pretty easily. So yeah, we'll head on to game two now. All right, taking a look at game number two here. We're actually kind of in the exact same setup that we were in the last game. Like I said, these are all going to be just like a series of two to three Raven builds. How many how many Ravens do we have this game? Oh, we got three of them. Excellent. So, I mean, this game did start pretty much the exact same way. 4GG did open up for the faster barracks to go for the faster medevac drop. And actually, this game is um, a game that we're actually opting not to go for the three Raven push. And we're just opting to play defensively and take our third base uh, as safely as we can. And this is something I've mentioned in previous TVT tutorials, but 
if we were to take it, a look at my map vision right now in this game, um, there's actually no ground attack path that 4GG can attack me that I would not know about. So we've got guys here. I actually took the extra step and I put an extra Marine on the edge for meta, uh, medevac drops here and here. So I'm actually um, pretty well defended everywhere, actually, except for right here for some reason. <laughs> there should be a Marine right on that ramp. That's a mistake by me. Um, but yeah, so 4GG this game, since he was un uninterrupted, he's going to go for the medevac drop. And I'm in my defensive position. Like we've got, we've got a tank in the main, we've got a tank in the natural, we've got a tank in the third base. I'm going to build the sensor tower now. So no matter what happens, like let's say his entire army ended up um, attacking me from right here. If I saw everything was here, I would simply unsiege this tank, unsiege this tank, and then we would just position ourselves here. Uh, and then in the situation of a doom drop, like our Marines should see it, which they did. And then we should just have our Viking Raven on a hotkey, which I do. And you should be able to just easily deal with any doom drop. Like this game, it's an easy cleanup. You just disable the medevacs. If you get them early, you disable. If they've already started dropping, I would just do turrets. Like you're going to get a lot of value from dropping like five turrets here versus Marines. But either way, you're going to you're going to clean up all of this for the for the cost of energy. 4GG actually kills two of my Ravens there, which arguably isn't a terrible trade for two medevacs. <laughs> Ravens are quite expensive. But uh, since I killed that, I'm still just going to stick to the plan. Keep macroing, go for my upgrades. 1-1 um, one, one is on the way. We've got two sensor towers. Like, again, if we look at our map control here, I don't have vision of the right, but my army is positioned right here. And uh, so even if he did attack me from right here, like, we would already be in position. So always keeping in mind of, like, where your army is relative to, like, where you don't have vision. But I do, I do like, immediately send the two Marines out again. So I just, like, try to get that set up. And then we're just basically waiting until combat shields finishes and until 1-1 is just about finished. And then we can do our first push. Like as long as we're fully defended on every angle, like, ooh, this is also a very good tip. You can put turrets in place of the Marines on the edge and this just saves you one supply. But it's also like really annoying because you can very easily fly a medevac over top of one of these and just lose the medevac if you're not paying attention. So I definitely recommend those as well. I don't know if I would build it this early into the game, maybe a little later, but still very awesome nonetheless. So now, so now that we do have combat shields, we're going for the push this game. And in the exact same fashion that we did last game, we're just basically going to walk across the map. And to find a position where we, we actually get lucky these two games, like the very first position I run into is the position that I get to siege up in. But let's say that 4GG's army was already positioned here. Essentially what I would do is I would just start like figuring out how to use this army to split him up. But since that's not happening this game, we're just going to focus on this scenario. We do gun it for the third. I mean, the, the ideal situation is that you have tanks in range of the third and then you just siege up immediately, which is essentially what we do here. Um, 4GG only has Marine tank and I make use of my Ravens by just seekering the Marines. Like, this is a very easy Seeker Missile to me because there's just so many Marines clumped up. And when you get a good Seeker like that, like, my tanks become so incredibly good at killing Marines that most of these Marines don't really stand much of a chance in this fight. But this is a great position, and the reason this is a great position is because we've actually got tanks pressuring him now. So he now has to deal with this army, or he's just going to slowly die and bleed out. And to deal with this army, like, the only way you can deal with it is by taking an inefficient fight. And look, we're even going to, like, reposition our tanks here so that we're pushing the third even harder. So, like, ultimately, yeah, he's going to try to break this and he's going to he's gonna try to come out here. But our tanks are just getting really good trades, which is all we ever need. Like, that's, 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 that's like, the way we're trying to play the game, right? <laughs> is we're trying to win the game by just trading better. So... I'm using my rallied units now. We're going to attack the right side. Always rally units. Never rally units across the map. Keep it rallied at home like this. Or else you're going to die to a doom drop. And I mean, just look at the map vision again. Like, we got the, we got the triple sensor tower. 
there's nothing 4GG is going to do to me that I that I won't know about. It's like almost like I'm playing with map hacks at this point. So yeah, we go down the right, we find the fifth base for free. It's not even morphed into a planetary yet. And then here he goes, finally trying to take this out. But like I said, he's going to take an inefficient trade. Which, he did have a lot of marines here, so it was a decent trade. But, you know, it's still a trade for us nonetheless. That's what we're aiming for, right? It's just trade, 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 try to out macro. 4GG did take quite uh, aggressive 4th base and 5th base this game. But but because he's 4G, GG, he's insanely good at macro. That's actually what I expect from him. So I actually want to pause the game here because this is a pivotal moment coming up. Um, so I'm just going to go to my map vision here. So I see that his army is kind of right in the middle. And I know that this is his whole army because I got a pretty good look at it. And it's pretty easy to judge if like the entire Terran army is together. And this is pretty obviously most of his stuff. So... I'm sieged right here, and I'm expecting that he's going to attack into me, but I notice that he's like, he's just kind of going for the trade. So what do I do is I just kind of unsiege these tanks, and I just go for the throat, and I rely on my reinforcements, which I know are going to do a pretty good job at trading against him again. Like, he's got to go through a lot of my reinforcements since we had that unit lead. This was just the best play at the moment, like... If I stayed here with my tanks, I never would have killed this PF. I only had two tanks, and that's not enough to kill it. So yeah, just going down the middle here, like we actually end up getting to kill a lot of stuff. I, want, I actually think I clear up everything here, yeah. And then, yeah, we have the tanks sieged at home. Like, this is just an easy cleanup as well. So yeah, that's another game that was pretty well uh, cleaned up. Let's head on over to game number three. All right, taking a look at game number three here against 4GG. And this game actually did start out a little bit differently. 4GG uh, opted to go for a one medevac cyclone drop versus me, which ended up not really doing much. So I ended up sending these units out to get some map control. And of course, if you guys ever want to see these replays, I'm going to start posting them in the description of every video. So feel free to check them out. You can download and follow along yourself. Hopefully that's helpful to, to uh, some of you guys. I know it's been quite heavily suggested. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this game, we just get the map control here. We see that he's got the army in a forward position this game, which I don't know. I don't know, really know how to explain this too much, but this game I just kind of felt like putting some pressure on. Like, since we are going for more of a mirror build this game where 4GG goes for uh, his own ravens, where are his ravens? Oh, they're over here in the corner. <laughs> I just felt like we should go for the attack. So we're doing the pressure of this game. Uh, the timing here is we went with our first two ravens. I'm not actually looking to win the game or anything. At most, I'm just looking to deny like a very early third base or something cheeky like that. Oh, I do have the third raven. There it is. Okay. So we wait for the third raven before going in, which I do think is the best timing, like waiting for the third one, just to be clear. Um, so I use the Reapers to get a little vision. We see that his army is still down here. But, I mean, we're blocking the best third-based option. So I just sit here for a little bit. Like, I, I contemplate going for this because I notice that there's no Ravens here yet. And I still don't know where his Ravens were this game. Oh, they were going for the trade. So this is kind of an interesting scenario. 4GG likes to do this sometimes where he just goes for the mineral trade. And this puts me in a situation again where I kind of have to just like push as hard as I can and fast as I can because the second that he gets like too many tanks down here it doesn't matter that I have these ravens like he's just gonna hold no matter what so when I see these guys fly in like this is kind of like the clue in that yeah I gotta start disabling tanks one by one and to do this like like I said we've been through this we we did this in the first game we disable a tank we unsiege we click the marker and then we send the tank at the edge of the marker, just like this. And then we, boop, that's going to die. And then we disable the next one. And then we send the next tank in. And then we siege that one. So now this tank is going to die. And then we look for the next tank. And we're just going to inch forward. Um, I didn't notice the tank on the high ground. This tank is actually quite good. But there's another disable there. Siege at the edge, and I actually see that there's no more tanks, so I'm actually f um, completely free to just move forward with the Marines here and just go for the kill. Um, but yeah, there's another tank up there. I don't think I have any more disables or else I would go for it. 
just kind of like sitting here at the edge sniping the ebays at this point i apologize if my camera control is terrible when i watch these replays by the way i'm trying to get better at it i'm not very smooth like any of the esl commentators are when they cast their games <laughs> but hopefully i'm doing an okay job but yeah this game's a pretty simple cleanup like whenever you have air control you can just slowly push a tank player like until they die like eventually he's gonna run out of scans right and right now we're already in a great position like we have position to kill the refineries we can poke at the scvs eventually i will get the energy to disable another tank i just have to wait a little longer but yeah this is like an easy cleanup game too 40g eventually just tries to push forward here and yeah you can't really do much actually he did a pretty he, he did an all right job given what he had but yeah ultimately we were just able to snipe off too many of his tanks for free at this part of the game but yeah, hopefully uh, you guys learn something from these games and it gives you a little bit more confidence. Uh, like I mentioned, like in this game, I wasn't really looking to end the game. But because he went for that trade, just go for it. Uh, if he was here and he was too defended and he had his Ravens, I would have just gone home and we could have just played out exactly how game two played out. Where we just take our third, build our sensor towers, put a Marine here, put a Marine here, put a Marine here for vision. You just play TVT normally from there. So yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace out.